That's a real shame when folks be throwing away a perfectly good white boy like that. Welcome to the Nation of Jake on The Voice, KWAM, FM 107.9 and AM 990. All right, welcome to it. Yes, have some. The Nation of Jake is on The Voice, FM 107.9, AM 990, online, kwamthevoice.com. We're streaming live on YouTube, the YouTube channel. Very easy to find, Nation of Jake. No spaces. Run it all together. And you'll be there. Share it with your friends. Have them subscribe to the Nation of Jake there on YouTube. Also, follow along on Facebook and on Twitter, both at Nation of Jake. Jake on this. Where are we? Monday, July 15th, year of our word 2019. Rainy. 75 or so. Gonna hang out here for a while. So stay dry. Be safe out there if you're on the road this afternoon. So Donald Trump is under fire once again for what have been deemed as racist tweets aimed at AOC's squad. That would be AOC and Alain Amar and Rashida Tlaib and somebody else who's like the Ringo star of the group. It's uh, Alana Presley. I don't know, like the fourth Beatle. I'd never really heard of her before, but now she's kind of worked her way into the squad there with AOC and their crew. All right, now this is your outrage du jour. We're going to get into this in a few minutes. It's overall largely an unhelpful distraction, a fight that everyone loses. This is escalating all the way to the House of Representatives so they can vote on a resolution to rebuke Donald Trump for his quote-unquote racist tweets. We'll get into it. Was it racist? Maybe. Was it xenophobic? Certainly. Is it helpful? Is it constructive? Probably not. We will tackle that in a few minutes. It's also Amazon Prime Day. Now, Amazon Prime Day It's not as cool as Optimus Prime Day. However, it's becoming a pretty big holiday, is Prime Day. It's kind of like something people get excited about. It's actually two days this year, all the great deals you can get at Amazon.com on a lot of their Amazon products. If you need another talkie puck, being the old Echo Dot, you can get those. They're like giving them away. Seriously, they've got like a free Echo Dot with purchase. So if you want one of those Alexa things, you can go ahead and Go over to Amazon.com and partake in Prime Day. But Prime Day is being marred by some strikes and protests among the Amazon rank and file. That's right. There are multiple walkouts happening at Amazon warehouses uh, here in the United States and also in Germany. So there are people that are protesting Amazon Prime Day, much like people were protesting about Nathan Bedford Forest Day, which is not near as big as Amazon Prime Day, but on Saturday, Governor Bill Lee of Tennessee declared it, I'm sorry, proclaimed it Nathan Bedford Forest Day. And this is a law that's on the books here in the state of Tennessee. The governor, by law, is obligated to proclaim July 13th as Nathan Bedford Forest Day. But if you read nationally, you're reading that Governor Bill Lee is honoring Nathan Bedford Forrest, like personally, like he's dressing up as Nathan Bedford Forrest. He's going to Nathan Bedford Forrest's grave over there in Health Sciences Park and worshiping. Uh, it's not the case. This is a law that's on the books, and we'll get into it. As far as where should that be on the priority list for a governor like Bill Lee to get that law changed? Uh, there's one problem. The governor doesn't make the laws. He executes the laws. It's up to us to change that law. All right, so all of that coming up, we will explore all those things and more. We've got the news crews. We've also got why people are planning on storming Area 51. Yeah, there's a big event planned for September. A million people are going to go bum rush Area 51 and I guess try to jump on the UFOs that they've got hidden. It's uh, some insane stuff. We'll talk about that as well coming up but first is first this weather man yeah you wake up today and it's just monsooning yesterday wasn't very nice either there's some rain scattered throughout the day and now they're saying flash floods possible as remnants of barry head towards the mid-south well those remnants are here on sunday afternoon 
Shelby County Government Emergency Management and Homeland Security said residents should prepare for the chance of flooding and heavy rain. Saw that heavy rain come in last night and into this morning. Director Brenda Jones says the remnants of Tropical Storm Barry are bringing heavy rain into the area. You can tell that right now. Look outside. It's been a steady rain to a heavy rain all day long. The National Weather Service predicts areas along the Mississippi River and west of it will see some of the heaviest rain. So that means some flooding along the river and also maybe in neighborhoods if your storm drain is obstructed. Uh, Chief Meteorologist Ron Childers over at WMC Action News 5 predicts several inches of rain over the next few days. He says the normal low-lying areas will see your typical ponding and flooding. So you've got this flash flooding, flash flooding alerts and stuff like that. You know, my kids, you know, they're getting real technological. They will, they've started to ask Alexa, the old Echo Dot, a lot of different questions. Uh, my, my older daughter, Eva, she's seven, and she's kind of the responsible one. She wants to make sure she's dressed for the weather. She wants to make sure that, oh, do I need sunscreen today? You know, she's, she's kind of ahead of her time. She's, uh, she's older than seven uh, at least the way she acts. So she'll get up and she'll ask Alexa, what's the weather going to be like today? And Alexa today tells her that it's going to be heavy rains with a chance of flash flooding. So my kid, while she acts older than seven, you sometimes forget that she's seven. So when the little magical voice out of the little hockey puck tells her that there's going to be a flood, she runs in, daddy, daddy, A-L-E-X-A says there's going to be floods today. And I'm like, well, there's no need to get upset about it. She's like, no, do we need to get an ark like an Evan Almighty? Like, what do we need to do? And I was like, there's not going to be any big floods. It's just going to be rainy. Water's going to pull up. We really don't have that problem. We have good drainage around the house. Everything's going to be okay. So she comes out. She's got like big old hip waders on and a raincoat. And I'm like, will you stop it? Will you stop it? It's not going to be that bad. It's just going to be rain. It's going to be rain. And some wind. That's it. We're good. So, Tropical Storm Barry, we can say, kind of fizzled out. In fact, over the weekend, I was talking to some people and they asked me, Hey, how are your, how are your folks down on the Gulf Coast? You know, your mom lives down in Gulfport, your family in Bay St. Louis. Are they okay with, with the storm down there? And I said, well, I haven't heard from them. Which either means everything's fine or they all been washed away. I really have no way of knowing. Nobody has texted me or contacted me about that. So I decided it would be in my best interest to find out if my mom was still alive. And she is. She's fine. She's not been washed away by any hurricane. They just told me that there was some rain and, and wind. Kind of like we're getting today. So everybody, just take a deep breath. Make sure your storm drain is clear. But if you, if you want to... Approach like my seven-year-old daughter. You can take all the precautions uh, that they outline here. Emergency management officials say you should prepare just in case. Just in case one of these flash floods uh, comes through and, and wipes everybody out. Uh, know the forecast. Have a radio on hand. You should always have a radio on hand just because this program's on the radio. Earl's program's on the radio. Radio's very important in a situation like this. Know the terms, all right? A flood watch means conditions are favorable for flooding to occur. A flood warning means flooding is occurring or will occur soon. Home preparedness, create a digital home inventory, uh, have a plan, practice how to shelter in place or evacuate in a moment's notice, know where higher ground is located in your neighborhood. Top of the hill in Rock and Raleigh. I'll tell you right now, if you live in Rock and Raleigh, go to the stage stop because they're at the top of the hill in Rock and Raleigh. Family communications plan. Program emergency numbers in your phone. Also keep emergency numbers on hand, such as in your wallet. Have a disaster kit ready. Have a portable kit with enough supplies to sustain you and your pets for seven days. Include important documents, medication, food, water, flashlights, and tools. And in flood safety, this is really important on a day like today. I think this is the only one on a day like today that you need to know. Don't just go driving through a flooded area, all right? Especially if you're like in a low-riding vehicle. Don't just go blindly driving through the flooded areas, 
All right, you mess up your car, you get stuck, hide your plane, that kind of stuff. It only takes, what, six inches of water. It'll knock you down, and 12 inches can float a vehicle. So you don't want to do that. I don't, I don't see there being anything like that right now. I mean, it's, it's raining, and it's wet for sure, but I don't think Tropical Storm Barry was the storm that everybody thought it would be. Weakened. I'm sure there's some people down in New Orleans who kind of wish it, it hadn't happened, but those people live for that kind of stuff. They got hurricane parties down there. They built their houses up on stilts. So it's going to be wet the next few days. That's the long way around to saying it's going to be wet and it's going to be okay because I look on the bright side. I'm a closet optimist. When it's like this, knocks down the temperature to the mid-70s so your AC isn't just working, working, working like it has been with the, with the heat advisories and stuff. I'll take this for a few weeks. Yeah, just all the heat puts so much stress on the system. I'll take some some wet weather and some milder temperatures for a few days. Take a reprieve. So look at it that way. All right, it's not all it's not all rainy, gloomy, black, snoopy clouds. All right, coming up, we're going to talk about this march on Area 51 scheduled for September. It's bonkers and goofy. Uh, but coming up, the outrage du jour is this. Trump stuff, you know, all these tweets, and now he's doubling down on what he said about these four Democrat congresswomen, and we'll get into that next right here in the Nation of Jake. The Voice, KWAM, FM 107.9, and AM 990. The Voice is proud to turn our spotlight on Bartlett all this week. Bartlett was first called Union Depot and Green Bottom and was the last major stagecoach stop by 1830. In 1866, with a population of less than 100, the city was officially incorporated and the name changed to Bartlett. Now, Bartlett is Shelby County's second and Tennessee's 10th largest city. Bartlett still preserves the small town spirit with a well-balanced city touch. Today, the landscape of Bartlett has changed as agriculture became second to business and in industry. Bartlett, a growing community, keeping a small town atmosphere and continually enhancing the quality of life. Spotlight on Bartlett brought to you in part by these great businesses. Emanuel Lutheran School has limited openings for preschool through 8th grade. Emanuel Lutheran School, faith, family, and future. Call 901-388-0205. Andy B's Bartlett Entertainment Center, 6276 Stage Road. You never know who you're going to see in the VIB. Call and reserve the VIB, 387-1141. When's the last time you looked at the windows in your house? Not through the windows, but at the windows. Really looked at them. There's dirt, streaks, buildup, smudges, fingerprints, paws prints, spider webs, dead bugs, those little white speckles, I have no idea what they are, and who knows what else. Now, cleaning all the windows in your house makes a big difference, but it's also a big job. That's why you need Just Windows Home Services. Just Windows has been taking the pain out of window cleaning since 1992. Just Windows cleans all types of windows, storm windows, screens, skylights, interior, exterior, upstairs and down. Now, I know I told you the company is called Just Windows Home Services, but they do a lot more. Roof and gutter cleaning, pressure washing, mirrors, blinds, ceiling fans, light fixtures, chandeliers. Look, if you've got hard to reach areas of the house, then you need Just Windows Home Services. Call for a free estimate, 751-3934. That's 751-3934. Or get them online at JustWindowsMemphis.com. That's JustWindowsMemphis.com. Power up your career and lifestyle with continuing education courses at Southwest Tennessee Community College. If you're a business owner, Southwest Workforce Solutions provides customized training for your employees too. Call us today at 901-333-4207. That's 901-333-4207. Or visit their website at southwest.tn.edu. Southwest Tennessee Community College, your best choice. I'm Ed Parami, the owner of JanPro, the franchise that helps you be your own boss. JanPro is now the fastest growing franchise in the entire world for the second year in a row by Entrepreneur Magazine. We are growing so fast we need new business owners right here in Memphis right now. So if you want to be your own boss and open your own business, call JanPro at 901-683-4900 to see just how easy it is to be your own boss. For as little as $950 down, you can be a part of JanPro. 
Don't waste another minute. Call 901-683-4900. If you're thinking about buying or selling a home, stop. Don't do anything until you talk to my man, James Underwood. James Underwood has been helping people like you navigate the Mid-South real estate market for more than a decade. So whether you're looking to buy your first home or you want to upgrade to your forever home, James Underwood can help make it happen. No gimmicks, no guarantees, just a rock-solid guy that I've known for 25 years. So now, if you're looking to buy or sell a home, hit up James Underwood with Crylight. JamesUnderwood.CryLike.com That's JamesUnderwood.CryLike.com When you're planning an event and need on-time delivery, call Odell Sanders. Sanders Catering has been in business for 31 years, specializing in breakfast, lunch, dinners, corporate, and social events. When you need a caterer to work with your budget, call Odell Sanders at 901-372-2631 or visit them online at sanderscatering.com and take a look at their menu. Sanders Catering, a leader in catering services. Call today at 901-372-2631. Hi, I'm David Weimer of Weimer's Jewelry, reminding you that we supply and install watch batteries for just $6. Weimer's Jewelry, 7525 Stage Road in the shops of Appling Way. Weimer's Jewelry, where we offer quick, courteous service, ring sizing done in one day. Come by and see Reagan. She's three now and see what she can do for you. I am David Weimer, inviting you to visit at 7525 Stage Road in the shops of Appling Way. Thrive Bank strives to make banking easy for our customers. You have a lot of choices when it comes to banks, so we invite you to visit one of our local offices in Memphis, Germantown, Collierville, and Arlington to see for yourself how our team, backed by our state-of-the-art online and mobile services, can simplify banking for you and your business. Triumph Bank, invested in our communities and making banking easy for you. Triumph is a member of the FDIC and an equal housing lender. TriumphBank.com. Let's talk growth. All right, welcome back to it. Yes, have some. The Nation of Jake on The Voice FM, 107.9 AM, 990. Online, kwamthevoice.com. Streaming live on YouTube, the channel, Nation of Jake. Run it all together. All right. So today, all you're going to hear about, all you're going to read about, are more of the president's tweets. Donald Trump, over the weekend referenced the recent tension between Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi and the four freshman Democrats who voted against the version of the border bill that was in the House, talking about Ilan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, Ayanna Presley, all led by AOC, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, uh, AOC's squad. They've been going back and forth with Nancy Pelosi, and at one point AOC... She did not infer, but implied. She implied that Nancy Pelosi was targeting them because they are all women of color. So she called Nancy Pelosi a racist and Donald Trump kind of defending Nancy Pelosi, but more likely trying to throw some gasoline on that fire. He decided to get into the fray and start tweeting about AOC's squad. And it went something like this. So interesting to see progressive Democrat congresswomen who originally came from countries whose governments are a complete and total catastrophe, the worst, most corrupt and inept anywhere in the world, now loudly and viciously telling the people of the United States, the greatest and most powerful nation on earth, how our government is to be run, Trump wrote. Now, that is going to be a problem, uh, mostly because three of the four of those freshman Democrat congresswomen were born right here in the United States. Uh, The only one who was not born here is Yolan Omar, who is a Democrat congresswoman from Minnesota. She was born in Mogadishu, Somalia, which if you want to talk about Mogadishu, Somalia, yeah, it's it's a pretty awful place. It's not really a place that you would want to go visit. Not a lot of people are are taking vacations to Mogadishu. All right, so Donald Trump's tweet, not helpful. Uh, It's got some problems. I mean, the worst thing you can do 
is tell somebody who is from this country to go back to your own country. And it's like, well, hold on, I was born in Detroit. Man, yeah, it's probably not the best. So his, his uh, tweet is being decried as racist. All right, and you can, you can say there's something there, uh, xenophobic more than racist, but also it just doesn't make sense. I mean, not only are three of these four women from this country, you don't say, if you don't like the way the government's run, leave the country. What you say is, I mean, go out and vote, and you win. You win an election. How about that? Because, listen, when President Obama was, was in office, you know, there are people who didn't like what he did. They didn't like Obamacare. They didn't like the Iran deal or whatever it was. Uh, President Obama, or before him, President George Bush, or President Bill Clinton, they never said, hey, if you don't like what I'm doing, leave the country. Get on out of here if you don't like what I'm doing. Uh, what you would say is, hey, look, go out and vote. If you want change, go out and vote. So I have a fundamental disagreement with even the sentiment of if you don't like the way we do things here, then leave the country, especially when you're talking about people who are citizens. All right, that, that's not to say that I agree with anything that AOC and her squad stand for. All right, I find a lot of their philosophy or their outlook, perspective, and ideas and policies to be abhorrent. I mean, I think that they're awful. I, I fundamentally disagree with what they say, but the solution is not, oh, get on out of here, go back to your country. And now there's, there's a lot of wait and see. Hold on a second. What did he say? Was it racially motivated? Was it racist? What are we looking at here? Instead of people just saying, no, it's just a dumb idea. I mean, that's, that's the way I look at it. It's just the whole idea of, hey, if, if you don't like the way our government is run, then you can leave the country. And it's like, hold on, no. If, if I don't like the way the government's run, I go and vote and try to change it. I try to go out and persuade people that my way's better. And then that's, that's how this works. So after being called racist for a day, Donald Trump has pretty much doubled down. And he's saying, no, we're not, I'm not racist. He said it wasn't racially motivated. Those those people, they don't like they don't like what we do. They can they can leave. So I, I think we have Donald Trump actually addressing this today. Just need to find the here we go. This is Trump today just uh, addressing this whole situation. If you're not happy here, then you can leave. As far as I'm concerned, if you hate our country, if you're not happy here, you can leave. And that's what I say all the time. That's what I said in a tweet, which I guess some people think is controversial. A lot of people love it, by the way. A lot of people love it. But if you're not happy in the U.S., if you're complaining all the time, very simply, you can leave. You can leave right now. Come back if you want. Don't come back. It's okay, too. But if you're not happy, you can leave. President Trump. All right, so, yeah, if you don't like it, you can leave. I mean, that in and of itself is just goofy. So this is a situation where, I mean, is it, is it racist? I don't know, maybe. Is it xenophobic? Sure. Is it just dumb? Just on its face. It's just stupid. It's unhelpful. It's inartful. And it's a fight that everyone loses. All right, because with regards to these freshman congresswomen who have such an outsized voice in Congress right now, they're getting all this attention. And instead of doing the right thing, and I put this on Twitter earlier. I just tweeted it out. It was just a thought. Instead of doing what you're supposed to do when you don't like somebody or when somebody makes you mad, when they're trying to get a rise out of you, ignoring them is usually the best thing you can do. You ignore people. You say, wait, who? Who's saying what? Like, well, you're talking about four people in Congress. Who cares? I got bigger fish to fry. But now they've got all this attention. They've got Donald Trump calling them out. That, give, that raises their profile, and then everybody's going to look for their responses. And so we've got this, again, a fight that everybody loses. And I think that Lindsey Graham is probably uh, right on point. He's right on point with what he said. Uh, he declined to comment, or he declined to condemn the tweet as racist. Uh, but he did go after those Democratic congresswomen based on their ideas. Uh, he went on, I guess... I don't know if he was on Fox and Friends or not. Yeah, I believe on Fox and Friends. Uh, he says, look, we all know that this group led by AOC, they're a bunch of communists. They hate Israel. They hate our own country. They're calling for guards along our border, the Border Patrol agents. They're calling them concentration camp guards. 
They accuse people who support Israel for, of doing it for the Benjamins. They're anti-Semitic. They're anti-America. So he goes, look, there's, there's no reason to get personal. There's no reason to talk about where they're from. There's no reason to talk about anything like that other than their ideas are terrible and they hate America. Just point out. Point out what they've gone on record as saying. They, they call our border agents concentration camp guards. They talk about our border policy as being uh, like Nazi Germany. They talk about capitalism like it's the worst thing in the world. You know, they want to re restructure the economy based on the Green New Deal. Uh, so there's, there's just a lot there that you can, you can seize upon, so to speak, without, without getting personal. There's no, there's no reason to do that. He was asked if Trump went too far with his comments. And so Graham, he says that the president should aim higher than the personalities of those congresswomen and instead talk about their policies. He says, you don't need to. He says, they're American citizens. They want an election. Take on their policies. He says that they're the face of the future of the party, and you will destroy the Democratic Party if that's the case. So there's just no way to do it. And, and also, you know, with regards to Ilan Omar, so she's the one who was born in Somalia. And there's, you know, you can, we can have a whole discussion about how that all worked out. She was born in Somalia. She came over here. She was naturalized. She's a naturalized citizen. She's eligible to hold office. But her district was transformed by Somalian refugees. I mean, we're talking about 30, 40, 50,000 Somali refugees who were settled there in her district. And so that's largely how she got elected. So, I mean, you can talk about how, you know, that was kind of manip manipulated. Uh, but that said, all you got to do is just let them tie their own rope. I mean, with, with regards to what they tweet and their ideas, because Lindsey Graham's right. They're communist. They're anti-American. They don't, they don't just not like the policies of Donald Trump in this administration. They hate the, the philosophy on which, uh, upon which our republic is built. Uh, they, don't, they don't believe in American values. They, they want full-on communism. That's really what they want. And it sounds goofy. And be like, oh, communism, rah! but no, they're into it. Uh, they really are. So, uh, yeah, just attack their ideas. Don't, don't even get, it, get down in there in the weeds with them. But have we ever known Donald Trump to rise above anything? And that's really the problem. Uh, he, he always toes that line, right? He always gets right up to the line. I'm not sure I use that that phrase properly. That said, he he always pushes it. He pushes it. Sometimes he goes a little too far and has to pull back and kind of massage his words after the fact. But you know, I think that this this will likely blow over. But now, now it's it's getting it's elevated to the uh, the point where the House of Representatives is going to draft a resolution to condemn Trump's tweets as racist. And this is just hilarious to me, is that a few months ago, when Alan Omar was tweeting anti-Semitic stuff, or when she implied or alluded to Senator Lindsey Graham uh, to being compromised, remember that? She says that, oh, it's, it's pretty obvious that Lindsey Graham is compromised, and she was referring to Lindsey Graham being gay, because there's rumors that Lindsey Graham is homosexual and that somebody has proof and that he's been compromised so that he is not acting of his own accord, that he's being blackmailed because he is gay and compromised. That is something that Ilan Omar has tweeted out. All right, well, a few months ago when there was a House resolution to condemn Ilan Omar's anti-Semitic tweets, Nancy Pelosi, she wouldn't go so far as to do that. She said, no, we're just going to condemn all hate, like all hate by anybody. Now, even though we're trying to address this uh, anti-Semitic tweets by one specific congresswoman, she jumped in front to protect Ilan Omar and said, we're just going to have a resolution to condemn all hate. Well, at this point, I mean, shouldn't she do the same thing instead of having a resolution to condemn Donald Trump's racist tweets? 
quote unquote, shouldn't she just say, you know what, we're just going to have a resolution to condemn all racism. Why don't we just do that? And honestly, this gets us no closer to any kind of solution for the problems facing the country. Uh, immigration, health care, the budget, the debt. In fact, in fact, Steve Mnuchin, the uh, Treasury Secretary, and Nancy Pelosi, they had a meeting. They're getting together to see if they can raise the debt ceiling again. Instead of reining in spending, they're just going to up the credit limit again. So instead of actually doing the things, attending to the business of the country, they want to go out and pass and sign symbolic resolutions. And for me, that's not it. That's not what they're there for. If you want to condemn Donald Trump's tweets as racist, get on Twitter and call him a racist. Issue a press release from your office. But going and taking a vote in Congress, I don't care if it takes five minutes I don't care how long it takes. Putting it down, making it official, all that garbage. If you're unwilling to do it for one side, if you're unwilling to do it when Ilan Omar tweets anti-Semitic things or calls Lindsey Graham compromise because everybody knows he's gay, right? If you are unwilling to condemn her for her tweets and then you turn around and say, but we are going to specifically condemn Donald Trump for his tweets, there's something wrong there. Uh, honestly, this, again, a fight everybody loses. This is lowest of the low. We're talking about grown children fighting on the Twitter, and that's the number one story of the day. I've seen a few interviews where, I guess, Ken Cuccinelli, who is the head of immigration of the Trump administration, uh, a lady on CNN, I forget her name, but she was, she was, uh, she was interviewing him, and he, she said, well, what about these tweets? Are these tweets racist? He's like, look, I hadn't been on Twitter. I really don't know much about these tweets. I don't think they're racist. He's like, I think that they are political hand grenades for sure, uh, but I, I really have no comment on the president's tweets. She's like, well, you're the head of immigration. He's like, yes, I'd like to talk to, about immigration. And she's kept on. So everybody must go on record as to what they think about these tweets by the president. He's doubling down. I think the tweets are dumb. I think they're stupid. I don't think that they are worthy of the office of president. I think they're beneath the office of president. But then again, Donald Trump is president and nothing's really beneath him. He gets down in the weeds and people like it. They do. They like the fact that he likes to fight back. So this is just what you have. You've got another Twitter dust up in the presidency of Donald J. Trump. Man, if we could go back and uninvent Twitter, that'd be fantastic, wouldn't it? That would be that would be great. Or, look, I don't agree with Donald Trump. I don't think you should leave the country. You should go out and you should tell the world how much you hate America and you want to change it. You want this to be a communist, socialist country. You want to tax people through the nose. You don't like the low unemployment. You don't like the high GDP. You want to change it. You want the Green New Deal. And then you want open borders. And let them go out and tell the world about their horrible ideas and how bad their ideas suck. And then you will be elected in 2020. Instead, you play this. You play their game. And it's a, it's a bad game to get into. All right, coming up, there are people who want to bum rush Area 51. We'll talk about why and also why that's an awful idea. We'll do it next right here in the Nation of Jake. The Voice, KWAM, FM 107.9 and AM 990. CBS News Update. President Trump isn't backing down from the racist language in a tweet in which he called on four minority members of Congress to go back to the country they came from. They're socialists, definitely. As to whether or not they're communists, I would think they might be. But this isn't what our country is about. Nevertheless, they're free to leave if they want. And if they want to leave, that's fine. And if they want to stay, that's fine. A few Republicans, including former Ohio Governor John Kasich and Maine Senator Susan Collins, are criticizing the president's remarks. CBS's Nancy Cordes. Clearly, there's a level of discomfort among Republicans about what the president continues to say about these four women. And beyond that, a strategic sense that what he is doing is handing to the Democrats on a silver platter the ability to rally around them. Speaking 
Speaker Nancy Pelosi wants lawmakers to support a resolution condemning Mr. Trump's comments. CBS News Update, I'm Pam Coulter. It's summertime and everyone is out mowing, trimming, blowing, and more. Whether it's residential or commercial work, your equipment is vital to your performance. Bartlett Small Engines have been serving the Bartlett community for over 45 years. They do even more than repair small engines. They carry the major brands for lawn equipment, garden, home needs, and even have generators with a parts department on site. Call Bartlett Small Engines today, 901-386-9779. Where can you go to get daily home cook specials like meatloaf, chicken and dumplings, over 20 home style vegetables, Bartlett's best catfish and grandma's homemade desserts and service that makes you feel right at home. The one and only Pops Comfort Kitchen. Pops Comfort Kitchen is the place to be after church on Sundays for their homemade turkey and dressing or come during the week for half off appetizers. Pops Comfort Kitchen located on Kirby Witten Road in Bartlett. Stop everything you're doing right now and ask yourself, are you currently receiving steady paychecks? What about when you're retired? Will you receive a monthly check to cover your expenses and also have some fun? Dan Groban and Phil Menard at Servant Advisors Group call this mailbox money. It's the monthly check you'll receive throughout retirement. They want to help remove stress from your retirement. They don't want you to worry about if the money will show up or how much money you'll receive. The only thing they want you to think about is how to spend it when it arrives. Find out how to get enough money in your mailbox every month when you're retired. Call Servant Advisors Group at 855-260-1000 for a complimentary retirement analysis with strategies that could help your nest egg provide you monthly income you'll need in retirement. Call right now, 855-260-1000. Servant Wealth Management is a registered investment advisor. Insurance and annuities offered through Servant Advisors Group, LLC. Insurance licensed in Tennessee, Mississippi, and in Arkansas. This is Clark Howard. It's absolutely shocking and amazing the breakthroughs in science and medicine that have improved our lives and saved people's lives. And we're moving into a brand new era of medical breakthroughs based on something that has been hyped for years and for the most part has been a bust, but is finding a new home in medicine, and that's 3D printing. You may have heard that back in the spring, researchers developed a 3D printed heart that is perfect, made to order for each person who needs a replacement heart. And more recently, a new form of 3D printed ear for somebody who's deaf that allows people who might not have ever been able to hear to then be able to hear very well using a 3D implant. This is really where we're headed with medicine. It's great. The backyard's looking great, Rob. Thanks, man. I was planning on adding a deck, too. Know any good contractors? Why don't you just ask HomeAdvisor? Home what? HomeAdvisor.com. You just tell them about your project and they match you with local pros that can do the job. Nice. Now, how much does it cost? Oh, Home Advisor's totally free to use. Plus, you can read customer reviews, check pricing, and book appointments for free. What's the website again? HomeAdvisor.com. Or just download the free Home Advisor app. Home Advisor. Hey. Hey, Bench. What are you doing? I'm rubbing my blue emu on. Were you ready to go fishing? Fishing? You said we were going fishing this morning. I have 10 Gold Glove oh, Awards. Oh, here we go again. Johnny Bench doesn't go fishing. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Johnny Bench goes catching. Blue Emu supports healthy muscles and joints. Blue Emu, it works fast and you won't stink. Available at Nationwide Retailers and Amazon. All right, welcome back to it. Yes, have some. It's the Nation of Jake on The Voice, FM 107.9 AM 990. We're online, kwamthevoice.com. Also, youtube.com, the Nation of Jake channel. Very simple, Nation of Jake, streaming live right now. You'll also be able to see the two-minute show in a little bit. Usually tonight is when I... Edit up the two-minute show. You'll probably see it either late tonight or early tomorrow. Get caught up 
on this two-hour program in just two minutes with the two-minute show on the Nation of Jake channel there on YouTube. In a few minutes, looks like they're going to have a new 007. Huh? Yes, a black female 007. We'll get into that in just a minute, but I saw this over the weekend, and I really wasn't sure what it was until I read up on it today. But nearly a million people have pledged to storm Area 51. Now, Area 51 is a top-secret classified research facility in Nevada. All right? This is where they did all the alien autopsies. This is where they keep all the UFOs and all the interstellar secrets. All right? This is all under wraps. This is highly secure, classified stuff. But I guess... People want in. They want to know the secrets. They do not want to be kept in the dark anymore. So nearly a million Facebook users say they're going to raid Area 51 on September 20th in a quest to see those extraterrestrials. More than 800,000 others say they're interested. So a million have committed. 800,000 are interested. All right. The Facebook event page is titled Storm Area 51. They can't stop all of us. And states, we can run faster than their bullets. Yeah, it's, it's inviting users from around the world to join a Naruto run into the area. I don't know what a Naruto run is, but I have an idea I'm going to find out. Oh, that's a Japanese manga-inspired running style featured arms outstretched backwards and heads forward. I guess it's like anime. Is that an anime thing? The mysterious Area 51 has been the subject of conspiracy theories for decades, many people believe the U.S. government stores its secrets about UFOs and aliens in the military site. The invitation comes a few weeks after a group of U.S. senators was briefed about reported encounters between the U.S. Navy and an un- un- unidentified aircraft or identified unidentified flying object. So, people want answers. They want to know. They don't want to be kept in the dark. I mean, look, if this is government stuff, this is all funded by public money, taxpayer-funded research, we have the right to know. And so there are a million people who will be doing a Naruto run at Area 51, uh, but there's, a, there's some problems with the plan. Yeah, not, not only will it be illegal, but they say that you won't even get close. Uh, an author and expert on Area 51 said the U.S. military will never let civilians anywhere near the top secret site after the Storm Area 51 movement went viral on Facebook. So a million users are planning on going. They can't stop all of us. And it goes on to say, let's see them aliens. Let's see them aliens. We're going to charge Area 51. Well, turns out, when you talk to the experts, Area 51 is an open training range for the U.S. Air Force and we would discourage anyone from trying to come into the area where we train American armed forces. The U.S. Air Force always stands ready to protect America and its assets. That's according to spokeswoman Laura McAndrews. Responding Monday on Fox & Friends, Annie Jacobson, author of Area 51, an uncensored history of America's top secret military base, dismissed the idea that civilians could get close to the facility. She explained that the classified military facility is housed inside a classified testing and training range, which is the size of Connecticut. Right there in the desert, in Nevada. There's no way you're going to get even close to it. You can't even do it. Even if a million people showed up, I mean, you'd be on the radar. You know what, you'd have like a, a line of, of vehicles, like at the end of Field of Dreams. If you build it, they will come. That base is so heavily guarded, both in terms of media and in terms of actual physicality, I don't think the Air Force or any of the other military partners or intelligence community partners that are all working out there at Area 51 are going to let anybody anywhere near the entrance to Area 51. Now, Area 51, the facility near Groom Lake, Nevada, it's run by the Air Force. The operations are highly classified. It's been linked to alien conspiracy theories since the testing of a spy plane in 1955 in which the CIA first shed light on the military detachment. The 2016 Pulitzer Prize finalist and New York Times bestselling author said disinformation and cover stories about the operations at Area 51 continue 
until this day. So it's largely a military outfit. Um, there's, there's, if there are any reports of UFOs and whatnot, sure, they may have, you know, whatever it is that's recovered or video at Area 51. But going on, I, I would not listen. This is kind of like a Facebook page of encouraging people to, you know, shoot a tornado during a tornado watch. Or, you know, hey, there's a, a hurricane coming. Go out and fire your guns at the hurricane or, or go take some fans, box fans, and push the hurricane away. It's a joke. It's just goofy. Nobody's going to go storm Area 51. But you can never be too sure. Uh, there might be a few weirdos in that million people who actually show up. They're going to get in a whole heap of trouble trying to storm Area 51. So if you see anything about this, uh, don't participate. It's a joke. Just be cool. There's nothing there for you at Area 51. So they would have you believe. All right, coming up, uh, Black 007. Not only a Black 007, a female Black 007. You know, that's the latest word out of Hollywood. We'll talk about that next right here in the Nation of Jake. The Voice, KWAM, FM 107.9 and AM 990. The Voice is proud to turn our spotlight on Bartlett all this week. Bartlett was first called Union Depot and Green Bottom and was the last major stagecoach stop by 1830. In 1866, with a population of less than 100, the city was officially incorporated and the name changed to Bartlett. Now, Bartlett is Shelby County's second and Tennessee's 10th largest city. Bartlett still preserves the small town spirit with a well-balanced city touch. Today, the landscape of Bartlett has changed. Its agriculture became second to business and in Industry. Bartlett, a growing community, keeping a small town atmosphere and continually enhancing the quality of life. Spotlight on Bartlett brought to you in part by these great businesses. Emanuel Lutheran School has limited openings for preschool through 8th grade. Emanuel Lutheran School, faith, family, and future. Call 901-388-0205. Andy B's Bartlett Entertainment Center, 6276 Stage Road. You never know who you're going to see in the VIB. Call and reserve the VIB, 387-1141. 3, 2, 1. This summer, buckle up for the journey of your life at the Pink Palace Family of Museums. Blast off with Apollo 11 First Steps Edition on the giant screen at the CTI Theater. Travel back in time with the Making Memphis Bicentennial Exhibit. Experience the newly renovated Pink Palace Mansion. Come enjoy history, science, nature, and so much more. This summer, travel from Memphis to the moon and back at the Pink Palace Family of Museums. Hey everybody, Michelle Calhoun here. I am the host of a new show called The Power of Her Story, where I'll be interviewing female business owners all over the Memphis area every Tuesday morning at 8 a.m. I believe that when we share women's stories, it empowers more women to write their own. Follow me on Instagram at The Power of Her Story. The Power of Her Story is brought to you in part by these great sponsors, Brown Properties, 901 eLearn, and its Patreon community, Strike up some fun with Andy B's, where entertainment, family, and fun is all wrapped into one. They have all the fun you need right here in Bartlett. Andy B's has nightly specials and a new lunch menu to fill your hungry appetite. Whether you are looking to unite your company in team building, have a birthday party, or a date night, Andy B's is where the party begins. Tell your friends to come and meet you at the B's. Andy B's Entertainment Center, bowling as it should be. When you're planning an event and need on-time delivery, call Odell Sanders. Sanders Catering has been in business for 31 years, specializing in breakfast, lunch, dinners, corporate, and social events. When you need a caterer to work with your budget, call Odell Sanders at 901-372-2631 or visit them online at sanderscatering.com and take a look at their menu. Sanders Catering, a leader in catering services. Call today at 901-372-2631. Road trips, family reunions, pool parties, beach parties, all have one thing in common. They all need snacks that come from Brim's. Mm. Brim's snack food has what you need. Cheese puffs, cheese curls, cracklins, cheddar fries, popcorn, pork rinds, potato chips, tortilla and corn chips, and more. Brim's snack foods have been providing employment for the Bartlett community for over 35 years, and their delicious snacks have been sold throughout the Southeast. Brim's snack foods, family owned.
All right, welcome back to it. Yes, have some. It's the Nation of Jake on The Voice, FM 107.9 AM 990, online, kwamthevoice.com. Streaming live on YouTube, YouTube channel, Nation of Jake. Go subscribe, tell your friends all about the Nation of Jake in a little bit. We'll recap the outrage du jour, Donald Trump's racist tweets. Now a resolution in the House brought by Nancy Pelosi to condemn Donald Trump's racist tweets. Uh, We'll also talk about all the outrage about Nathan Bedford Forest Day. How did you celebrate Nathan Bedford Forest Day? And also a lot of clickbait headlines about Governor Lee and Nathan Bedford Forest Day. We will tackle that coming up next hour, just a few minutes from now. Uh, Well, we've also got some clickbait here. This is a this is an article about the upcoming James Bond flick, Bond 25. All right, Daniel Craig still plays James Bond, who is known as 007. He has a license to kill. These movies have not varied much. You've got a womanizing MI6 spy, James Bond. He goes out, action, explosions, a villain, and some Bond girls. James Bond has his way with the ladies. Well, the Me Too movement has kind of changed up James Bond a little bit. And and here's the headline. Black British actress Lashana Lynch tapped as new 007. So you might be thinking, oh my God, they went straight from maybe we should have a black James Bond to, oh, we're going to have a female black James Bond. I mean, just go all in. Just go all in. Just go total woke, right? But that's not really it. That's not it. There's a new 007 in town. And it's not James Bond, uh, says here from Hollywood Reporter, wherever the hell this comes from. According to The Guardian, the upcoming Bond 25 film will revolutionize the classy spy franchise in a big way by having a black British actress take the coveted secret agent number after Daniel Craig's James Bond leaves MI6. So you don't have a black lady James Bond. What you have is a story in which James Bond retires... He's on the beach in Jamaica. He gets called back by M only to find out that his code name, his 007 license to kill, has been reassigned to someone else. And this person happens to be a British black woman. That just sounds like that's the plot to the movie. And also, why would you tell everybody this? Why wouldn't you just let people figure it out? That's just it. Like They they go and they explain everything in this article. And so I can't unread it, so I'm going to read it to you. Spoiler alert. These these folks making the movie, they say there's a pivotal scene at the start of the film where M says, come in 007, and in walks Lashana, who is black, beautiful, and a woman. It's a popcorn-dropping moment. Well, not anymore. Not anymore. You just gave away the whole deal. So I guess Bond 25, they call back James Bond from retirement. He's, I guess, got to get a new code name. I mean, he could be double O negative. He could be whatever he wanted. They're still going to give him a gun. He's still going to have his Walther PPK or whatever the hell he used to, to. Was it a Walther PPK? Is that what James Bond carried? I don't know. I should know that. Uh, so, yeah, this is, this is their way of introducing, you no, know, essentially a new Bond woman. But I don't think that she's going to get with James Bond. I think she'll be the... She's not going to be one of these ladies who is... Under his spell, she's going to be another MI6 agent. So what? So it's not like they they brought in a lady and named her like Jamie Bond or Jackie Bond, and then trying to. You know, we'll see how it works out. It's kind of goofy though. I don't just create a new character. Who is that character? I guess that's what they're doing. We'll see how it does. That's going to tell the tale, won't it? The Mid-South Station with the most local talk and CBS News at the top of every hour. KWAM Memphis. This is CBS News on the Hour. Real news, real reporting. I'm Pam Coulter. President Trump is not backing off of his tweet that urged four minority women in the House of Representatives to go back to the country they came from. These are people that if they don't like it here, they can leave. And I'd be, I'd 
I don't know who's going to miss him, but I guess some people will. The women are all U.S. citizens. CBS's Nancy Cordes on Republican reaction. What we're starting to get a picture of is how uncomfortable at least some Republicans are with the president's comments. Let me just give you a few examples. Will Hurd, Republican from Texas, called the president's comments racist and xenophobic. Rob Portman, a Republican senator from Ohio, called the president's comments divisive, unnecessary, and wrong. Fred Upton from Michigan said it's very disappointing. You know, three of the four women were born in this country, and it makes no sense what the president is saying. The ACLU will fight the Trump administration plan that would effectively bar asylum seekers who come through Mexico from being considered for asylum in the U.S. Attorney Lee Gallant says the president doesn't have the authority to do that. It's substantively unlawful. Even if they had published this rule in the Federal Register, they could not do it. Only Congress can amend the immigration laws. Accused child sex offender Jeffrey Epstein will remain in jail until at least Thursday. CBS's Matt Piper. The judge made no decision on whether to release Epstein on bail. That will instead happen on Thursday. But two alleged victims did speak in court, one saying she was 14 when Epstein sexually assaulted her in Palm Beach. Both women said they think Epstein should continue to be jailed while he awaits trial. His defense attorney saying Epstein should be able to work closely to defend himself. A new study is shedding new law Light on anorexia, CBS's Vicki Barker with details. U.S. and British researchers say they found evidence to suggest that anorexia isn't just a psychiatric disorder, but may at least be partly due to a metabolic disorder as well, potentially paving the way for new treatments. Now that's important because anorexia has the highest mortality rate of any psychiatric illness. Amazon employees in Shakopee, Minnesota, planned a six-hour walkout today on one of the company's busiest days of the year. We're going on strike on Prime Day, mainly demanding safe, reliable jobs from Amazon. Speeds that we have to work are very physically and mentally exhausting. Basically, we just want them to treat us with respect as human beings and not treat us like machines. On Wall Street at this hour, the Dow is up eight points. NASDAQ is ahead just about 14. This is CBS News. CBS News Radio is your home for breaking news. With our team of reporters around the country and the world, we give you the coverage you can trust. You probably want to eat healthy, but getting enough organic fruits and vegetables into your diet every day is not only time-consuming, it's expensive. That's why at Texas Superfood, we've created a blend of the best USDA organic, vine-ripened fruits and vegetables, powerful enzymes and probiotics, and energizing herbs, all in a convenient capsule or powder. We call it Texas Superfood Complete Organic. Hi, I'm naturopathic Dr. Dennis Black, and I invented Texas Superfood almost 20 years ago with one goal in mind, to help people like you who lead busy lives get the all-natural nutrition that every one of us needs and deserves. So if you can't, won't, or don't eat all your organic fruits and vegetables every day, Texas Superfood Complete Organic makes eating healthy easy. See our full line of quality nutritional products at texassuperfood.com or call us at 855-TEXAS-55. That's 855-TEXAS-55, texassuperfood.com. Most dog owners know this already. Their pups' affections know no bounds. CBS's Stefan Kaufman has some new insights. For a dog psychology expert, Lori May Walden, there's no doubt that your dog probably loves you more than he loves himself. They sense what's going on with us. May Walden says a dog has the ability to exhibit unconditional love, something people may have difficulty doing. They can look straight into your soul. When I look into their eyes, you know they're just looking at you saying, love me because I'm going to love you. Stephen Kaufman, CBS News, Prescott, Arizona. It's a kind of harmonic convergence for a baby born in St. Louis. A couple welcomed a daughter, Jamie Brown, on July 11th. The infant was born at 7.11 p.m. and weighed 7 pounds 11 ounces. Mother and baby are said to be doing well. No word on when the baby will make her first visit to a 7-Eleven. Pam Coulter, CBS News. 
Are you more than $10,000 in debt? Feel like you're on a never-ending treadmill, staying in one place and never getting ahead with those minimum payments? You feel like there's no way out? Don't let the credit card companies bully you anymore. There are programs in place to help you get free of your debt, and you don't have to pay the entire amount you owe. The program at Total Financial Freedom can help you get debt-free in months instead of decades. Get off the debt treadmill and stop the harassment. Get free of credit card debt, signature loans, department store cards, internet loans, and medical bills. Call now at 800-899-8922 for free information. For about 10 years, Total Financial Freedom has helped thousands. They're A-plus rated by the Better Business Bureau, too. Get off the endless cycle without having to declare bankruptcy. You'll have the right to settle your debt for a mere fraction of what you owe. Call Total Financial now at 800 899 8922. That's 800 899 8920. Jake, I need my money. You want to work here? Get them to sign on the line, which is dotted. Welcome to the Nation of Jake on The Voice, KWAM, FM 107.9, and AM 990. All right, welcome back to it. Yes, have some. The Nation of Jake on The Voice, FM 107.9, AM 990, online, kwamthevoice.com. We are streaming live on YouTube. Just go to youtube.com. Nation of Jake is the channel. That is one word, Nation of Jake, all together now on Facebook as well and Twitter at Nation of Jake. Scrolling through the Twitter, looking at the latest headlines. Now we got this one from The Hill. Hashtag breaking. Pelosi announces House resolution to condemn Trump tweets telling Dem Congresswomen to go back to their countries. These would be the racist tweets. That is the outrage du jour. And I'm not a big fan of these symbolic resolutions that really don't pertain to the business of the country. It's also kind of an odd spot for Pelosi to put herself in, who just a few months ago, she couldn't even get a resolution to condemn anti-Semitism within her own party. Uh, She backed out, watered that all down to, let's just condemn all anti-Semitism. Let's condemn all hate. Let's just condemn all hate, and we can just do it that way. But if you put racism under hate, then haven't you already condemned all racism too? And that's what you have to do with Trump if you want to be consistent, is that you don't want to single anybody out, and you don't want to single out just anti-Semitism, just single out hate. I think this was covered by the last resolution that they passed on the matter, didn't they? Yeah, because Ilhan Omar was tweeting all that anti-Semitic stuff. And so there was a House resolution to condemn her anti-Semitism, and Nancy Pelosi couldn't even do that. And that's why these symbolic resolutions are garbage, and they've got no place on the House floor. They're all stupid. They do nothing. They do absolutely nothing. They're non-binding. You're condemning hate, condemning racism. Do, do it all you want. Uh, it's, it's not going to change anything. It's not going to change the way people think. So, yeah, if, if they acted as swiftly condemning you know, mean tweets from Donald Trump as they did actually solving problems like with immigration or with the budget or with health care, uh, I would like to see that. I would like to see them work with that type of uh, sense of urgency. And now let's just draft a resolution, because you get these resolutions, you got to get the House together, you got to vote on it, you have to debate it. And yeah, I know that it's completely different than the problem of uh, the border crisis or with health care or whatever it is. It's not an apples-to-apples comparison. But when the lady can't even pass a resolution to condemn anti-Semitism within her own party... You can compare that to this resolution, this symbolic, goofy, needless resolution to condemn Donald Trump's racist tweets, right? How do you like them apples? You want to compare those? We can. We can do that. So, look, I'm just looking at this as just a fight that nobody wins. Donald Trump could have easily just pointed out that these four Democrat congresswomen do not like America, that they're communists, and that their ideas are terrible— But instead, he decided to get personal and errantly uh, go out and tweet that, you know, these all these ladies from from different countries and they should go back to the countries uh, from which they came. 
And that's not true. Only one of them is from a different country. And I'm sure that's exactly who he was referring to. But it's also kind of the problem when you've got a squad or a group or you've got a collective. You know, things get all muddled. And it was just also just a a goofy idea that if you don't like this government, you don't like the way things are being done, leave the country. No, what you do is you go and you vote. You persuade other people to to tell them why uh, your your uh, your way is better and get them to vote for you or with you for somebody who can do what you want them to do. It's kind of like this deal that we're we're seeing in Tennessee. All right, on Friday, we were talking about Billy, the governor of Tennessee. He was going to proclaim and did proclaim Saturday, July 13th as Nathan Bedford Forest Day. Okay? Now this is a law that's been on the books for, I think, nine or ten years. Now, I'm not sure how it came about. I'm not sure what was so important about honoring all these Confederate figures in the Tennessee State House. you got to take it up with them. Tennessee State Legislature, those are the ones who make the laws. And Governor Bill Lee is the one who executes the law. He's the governor. He's the executive. So if there are laws on the books, it's up to the governor to execute the laws. But if you read everything about July 13th being Nathan Bedford Forest Day, you would think that Bill Lee invented it. You would think that one of the first things Bill Lee did as governor when he came in seven months ago was to declare July 13th of all dates, just a rando date in the middle of July, Nathan Bedford Forest Day, and that he celebrates Nathan Bedford Forest Day like it's Christmas. And you see Bill Lee with his rebel flag cake. Bill Lee sitting around his rebel flag cake with his KKK party hats. You know, maybe playing a game of pin the burning cross on the donkey or something. What what, what would would some racist play? I don't know. I don't even know what the proper uh, items would be to pin on the other. So I just went with, you know, pin the burning cross on the donkey. So look, Bill Lee... I don't think that he knew that July 13th was Nathan Bedford Forest Day. You know what somebody did? They went into Billy's office. They said, hey, here's your agenda for the week or the month. Here's the calendar. Here's something you have to do. You have to proclaim July 13th to be Nathan Bedford Forest Day. And Billy said, really? Is that like something I have to do? Can I not do that? And they said, it's the law. You have to do it. He's like, well, okay. I guess I have to do it. It is the law. So all these people who are saying that Bill Lee is complicit in establishing Nathan Bedford Forest Day, which you didn't know this thing existed. I don't, I mean, I don't, I never did. I didn't know that July 13th was Nathan Bedford Forest Day. But if you read about it, you hear all these people, oh, how could he do that? How could Bill Lee do that? Well, here's one from a Rhodes professor. This was on CNN.com. And so this Rhodes professor, Timothy Hubner, uh, he writes, and I know he probably didn't write the headline. He probably didn't write the headline, so I can't put it all on old Professor Hubner, who's not just a professor. He's he's some sort of special professor. Uh, He's also a provost, which sounds Russian. I don't know if it is, but he's a provost. Says here, Tennessee Governor Bill Lee signed a proclamation officially declaring July 13th Nathan Bedford Forest Day thus honoring the former Confederate general, slave trader, and early leader of the Ku Klux Klan. Now, let me go back to the headline, though. The headline is, here's the story of the slave trader who Tennessee's governor is honoring. So what you've done, essentially, you've reduced Nathan Bedford Forrest to simply slave trader, which that was part of his life. That was one of many things the man did. He was a Confederate general. He was a brilliant general. All right. But yes, he was a slave trader. That's part of it. So in the headline, they want to highlight the worst thing that Nathan Bedford Forrest did. Who is here's the story of the slave trader who Tennessee's governor is honoring as if Tennessee's governor, Bill Lee, made the decision or is personally and only the only one honoring him. And then he goes on. Apparently, Tennessee law requires such a proclamation. Yeah, it's you know, It's kind of dishonest, isn't it? That's a clickbait headline, isn't it? And also, oh, yeah, Bill Lee. 
this awful guy wants to honor this awful Confederate general and slave trader. Uh, apparently, Tennessee law requires such a proclamation. Beginning in 1921, the state began celebrating Forest Day, and a state statute mandates that the governor sign a proclamation honoring Forrest as a recognized military figure in American history and native Tennessean. When asked why, like his predecessors, he would continue to authorize the celebration of such a figure, Lee weakly replied that he did so because the law requires that I do it, and I haven't looked at changing that law. Well, Timothy Hubner over at Rhodes says, why not? Why hasn't the governor looked at changing the law? Nathan Bedford Forrest was no hero and does not deserve to be honored as such. Well, that might be true. Well, here's why the governor hasn't looked at changing that law, because he's only been there for seven months. He's had exactly one legislative session. He's also the governor, not a legislator. And yeah, some goofy holiday that we've been ignoring forever wasn't high on his list of priorities. I say just lay it all on the feet of the governor. I say, yeah, why not just lay it at the feet of the Bill Lee's fault. That is Nathan Bedford Forrest Day. Ah, oh. it's, it's all absurd. Nobody celebrates Nathan Bedford Forrest Day. Nobody even associates July 13th with Nathan Bedford Forrest Day. It's almost, it's as absurd or more absurd than all those goofy national days that you hear about. Today is National I Love Horses Day. It's also National Tapioca Pudding Day. Those are all goofy, made-up days that nobody cares about. And Nathan Bedford Forest Day is about on par with National Tapioca Pudding Day. Granted, National Tapioca Pudding Day is less racist than Nathan Bedford Forest Day. And I get it. I get that Nathan Bedford Forrest's life was way more complex. And you could get into the history of Nathan Bedford Forrest. We can do all that on another show. Uh, that said, the evil men do lives after them. The good is often interred with their bones. Once you're branded slave trader, first grand wizard of the KKK, that's your brand. And people don't feel good about celebrating a day in honor of you. Nathan Bedford Forrest. And there's a lot of Bedford Forrest apologists out there who I've gotten into it with them before. And I just say, hey, look, man, perception is reality here. You know, if, if you want me to read a biography about Nathan Bedford Forrest, I will. And I'll be enlightened. But that does not mean that I'm going to go out and advocate for a celebration. So, you know, the usual suspects and also some people that you, you might not think. You had Steve Cohen from right here in Memphis the Democrat congressman, uh, he condemned the proclamation of Nathan Bedford Forrest Day. Uh, he said that it's wrong and that Governor Lee should remove the bust of Forrest at the state capitol. Uh, he says, our state has a proud history filled with notable contributions from many great Tennesseans. We have better people to honor than the first Grand Wizard of the KKK in recent years. An increasing number of state and local governments, including the city of Memphis, have recognized that symbols matter and made changes to its public displays to better reflect our values. Governor Lee should be bringing Tennessee into the 21st century, not backsliding into the 19th. Senator Ted Cruz, Republican from Texas, he weighed in on the matter. He says that they should not have a day in his honor. Uh, he says this is wrong. Forrest was a Confederate general and delegate to the 1868 Democratic Convention. He was also a slave trader and the first Grand Wizard of the KKK. Tennessee should not have an official day honoring him. Change the law. That's it right there. Change the law. Who changes the law? You change the law. You elect leaders. If this is, a, if this is so important to you, which other 364 days a year, you didn't even know it existed. And even when it does exist, did you, did you go out and see any, any parties for Nathan Bedford Forrest? No, you did not. Because nobody celebrates this. Look, the most racist guy I know had no idea it was Nathan Bedford Forrest Day. And even if he did, he wasn't going to make any special plans to honor him. All right? So, yeah, so it's, it's, it's all goofy the way this stuff is covered. And, you know, so, yeah, I've got the, I've got the law in my... It's, but it's boring. It's just, oh, you're going to honor Robert E. Lee and Andrew Jackson. 
and also Confederate Decoration Day and Nathan Bedford Forrest Day and a bunch of other days that nobody cares. But also on the list is Abraham Lincoln Day. Abraham Lincoln's on there too because we all like Honest Abe. So uh, there, there you have it. Everything's goofy. People get so triggered over stuff that really in the overall scheme of things doesn't matter. Meanwhile, you know, you've got, you know, real, real holidays. You know, things that matter to people like Amazon Prime Day. Yeah, Amazon Prime Day is today and tomorrow. And I got some of the best deals on Amazon Prime on Prime Day. And also some workers are taking the opportunity to celebrate Prime Day by going on strike from Amazon. We'll talk about that next right here in the Nation of Jake. The Voice, KWAM, FM 107.9 and AM 990. The Voice is proud to turn our spotlight on Bartlett all this week. Bartlett was first called Union Depot and Green Bottom and was the last major stagecoach stop by 1830. In 1866, with a population of less than 100, the city was officially incorporated and the name changed to Bartlett. Now, Bartlett is Shelby County's second and Tennessee's 10th largest city. Bartlett still preserves the small town spirit with a well-balanced city touch. Today, the landscape of Bartlett has changed. Its agriculture became second to business and in industry. Bartlett, a growing community, keeping a small town atmosphere and continually enhancing the quality of life. Spotlight on Bartlett brought to you in part by these great businesses. ATC Fitness in Bartlett, open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Now accepting Silver Sneakers members. Visit them online at atcfitness.com. First South Financial, banking with friends since 1957. Visit them online at firstsouth.com. When you're planning an event and need on-time delivery, call Odell Sanders. Sanders Catering has been in business for 31 years, specializing in breakfast, lunch, dinners, corporate, and social events. When you need a caterer to work with your budget, call Odell Sanders at 901-372-2631 or visit them online at sanderscatering.com and take a look at their menu. Sanders Catering, a leader in catering services. Call today at 901-372-2631. Chuck Woolery here for Blue Emu. How many pain relief ads do you hear daily? 5, 10, 15, and of course, all of them claim their new ingredient or their new formula will help. Blue Emu has maintained the same quality year after year and continues to be the number one branded emu oil product. So don't trust hype. Trust Blue Emu to support healthy muscles and joints. Choose Blue Emu pain relief products. They work fast and you won't stink. Available at retailers nationwide. Have you heard about Newsmax TV? It's America's fastest growing cable news channel in 70 million homes. Every minute, every day. Watch Newsmax for breaking news on President Trump. Plus, get insights from Bill O'Reilly, Alan Dershowitz, Pat Buchanan, Mike Reagan, and more. You can find Newsmax TV on DirecTV, Xfinity, Dish, Optimum, Spectrum, Fios, Uverse, Suddenlink, Wow, and dozens of cable systems. So check your guide now and watch Newsmax TV. Real news for real people. Road trips, family reunions, pool parties, beach parties, all have one thing in common. They all need snacks that come from Brim's. Mm. Brim's snack food has what you need. Cheese puffs, cheese curls, cracklins, cheddar fries, popcorn, pork rinds, potato chips, tortilla and corn chips, and more. Brim's snack foods have been providing employment for the Bartlett community for over 35 years, and their delicious snacks have been sold throughout the Southeast. Brim's snack foods, family owned. Hi, I'm David Weimer of Weimer's Jewelry. We are your hometown jewelry store where all our work is done on site. Ring sizing, chain repair, stone setting, and custom design are just a few things we do. Weimer's Jewelry, 7525 Stage Road in the shops of Appling Way. David Weimer here inviting you to come by and see our new line of citizen watches. Weimer's Jewelry, 7525 Stage Road in the shops of Appling Way. ATC Fitness would like to announce their new partnership with Silver Sneakers. That's right, ATC Fitness now accepts Silver Sneakers members. ATC Fitness is your local, family-owned, 24-hour gym. Get started on the right track with their easy-to-follow instructions and demonstrations. Remember, if you are a Silver Sneakers member, come to any ATC Fitness throughout the Mid-South. Check them out online at atcfitness.com to find the nearest location to you. If you're thinking about buying or selling a home, stop. 
Don't do anything until you talk to my man, James Underwood. James Underwood has been helping people like you navigate the Mid-South real estate market for more than a decade. So whether you're looking to buy your first home or you want to upgrade to your forever home, James Underwood can help make it happen. No gimmicks, no guarantees, just a rock solid guy that I've known for 25 years. So now, if you're looking to buy or sell a home, hit up James Underwood with Crylike. JamesUnderwood.Crylike.com. That's JamesUnderwood.Crylike.com. Taste buds, are you ready for the scrumptious, amazing treats from J Bear Bake Shop in Bartlett? They have apple lace bread pudding, ooey gooey's, even vegan vanilla and gluten free chocolate cupcakes. Plus, their traditional favorites strawberry, red velvet cupcakes, and sticky buns. And everything has a J Bear twist. Whether it's designing a custom cake or introducing a new flavor, stop by and have the very best J Bear Bake Shop. 7124 US 64 Bartlett. Brown Properties. They specialize in commercial and industrial real estate in all of North Mississippi. He helped me locate a space and helped me get in so easily. The most professional, most accommodating person that I have ever worked with in my professional career. I would absolutely recommend Jim Brown very highly. As a matter of fact, he'll be my real estate agent from now into the future for sure. Hi, I'm Jim Brown with Brown Properties, commercial industrial real estate located in South Haven, Mississippi. Call me at 662-393-2255. All right, welcome back to it. Yes, have some. The Nation of Jake is on The Voice, FM 107.9, AM 990, online, kwamthevoice.com. The Listen Live link is in the top right corner on that website, but you can get over to YouTube and subscribe to the Nation of Jake channel where you can watch the program. You can also watch a replay of the program. It'll stay up there in perpetuity or until I take it down. Say, if I don't feel good about the show, and I'll say, I don't want anybody else to see that then I can take it down, or YouTube could decide they don't want anybody to see it, and they could take it down. But I'm not that controversial. I just like to get you through a couple of hours in the day, get you caught up on everything that's going on in our news cycle, which, by the way, it's too fast. News cycle's too fast. Like right now, we got Donald Trump. He sent some tweets. People are calling him racist. They were definitely xenophobic, and they were kind of dumb. I mean, telling people who were born in this country to go back to the countries from which they came, that's always a bad move. It's always embarrassing. Now, go back to your own country. Uh, I'm from Detroit. Well, go back to Detroit. Ah, you, so you end up looking like a moron. And also, if you don't like the way the government's run in a country of which you're a citizen, the answer is not to leave the country. It's just go out. Hey, win an election. That's the answer. You know, you go out with your terrible ideas and try to win an election, and if you do, then you deserve to be in the seat. And these four women that he was referring to, they did win their elections. However, whenever Donald Trump addresses them directly, references them, he raises their national profile, and people start more people start listening, which may be in his whole plan. He, he wants people to know that this is the new face of the Democrat Party, because you look at the internal polling for a lot, the the negative, the, uh, the, the disapproval rating, so to speak, is, is, is pretty high on, on all of them. The AOC, the Alain Omar, the Rashida Tlaib, there are a lot of people who do not like what they have to say. But as like your main story uh, today is Donald Trump racist tweet day. You, you almost forget it's Amazon Prime Day. Amazon Prime Day is becoming a national holiday. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised that within a decade... We're taking off work on Amazon Prime Day. Actually, there are some Amazon employees who want to take the day off of work on Amazon Prime Day. Amazon Prime, everything's on sale, or a lot of stuff is. You can get deep, deep savings. It's like Christmas in July, right? You go on Amazon, you can get like a Amazon Alexa talkie puck thing for like 15 bucks. You can get one of them fire sticks for 15 bucks if you're a cord cutter. You can go on there. I've got I've got the best deals on Amazon Prime Day here in a second, but uh, Amazon workers are striking today. They want to send a message to Optimus Prime or Jeff Bezos or whoever runs Amazon that the working conditions will not abide. Uh, we've got them striking in Minnesota. Amazon workers at a warehouse there in Shakopee, Minnesota, are temporarily going on strike 
today, the first of two Prime Day summer sales. Employees at the Minnesota Amazon Fulfillment Center said they'll walk out for six hours, overlapping with the morning and evening shifts. The workers argue Amazon has failed to meet their demands. Oh, that's, that's how you get what you want from your employer. Go around making demands. Go, go up to the guy who's actually writing the checks and start demanding stuff from him. That's a good move. The demands include converting more temp positions to Amazon employees and permanently easing productivity quotas that workers say make their jobs unsafe. Uh, several workers are traveling from Seattle to join the protests outside of Minneapolis, according to a statement from Amazon Employees for Climate Justice. That's right. They've got their own little group. Amazon Employees for Climate Justice. Amazon has disputed the employees' allegations about working conditions. The online retailer said that on average, 90% of associates at the Shakopee Fulfillment Center are full-time employees. And more than 30 have been offered full-time positions recently. Prime Day is one of Amazon's busiest promotions. So these folks who are going to up and walk for a grand total of six hours, that's how committed you are. You won't even walk out for a full day. You're going to walk out for six hours, and that's probably carefully calculated because if you go and miss three hours of work and then the next shift misses three, maybe that's just up to the point where they can't fire you per their uh, rules. So there's a reason that it's just six hours because if you were really on strike, you just wouldn't go in. You say, nope, nope, not going in. We're going to cripple Prime Day. That's right. They're they're not just doing it here uh, in, in the U.S., in Germany. There's also a facility where the workers have gone on strike in a protest over pay and working conditions as Prime Day gets underway. The strikes held under the slogan, No More Discount on Our Incomes, started Sunday night at Amazon's site in Wern, Rheinberg, Leipzig, Graben, Klobens, and Bad Hersfield in uh, Germany. The protests were expected to continue at least through Monday, and they're being held to coincide with uh, Prime Day, the big discount event. Uh, they're unionized over there. Uh, they're saying that uh, employees lack a living wage, and they called for collective bargaining agreements to be made binding across Germany's retail sector. Uh, Amazon says that the strike was having no effect on operations. Now, that's when you have to be really, really disheartened. When you are willing to strike and it has no effect on operations during the busiest two days of Amazon's fiscal year, that means you're in trouble. Right? That means that you are a non-essential employee. Essentially, you're not essential. Is that A, you're going to strike. When you strike, the goal is to demonstrate that, hey, you can't do this without us. That's when you have like a garbage strike. When the horse flies grow to three inches long because of the stink in a city or like a pilot strike or, or any other kind of strike. You know, uh, metal workers or UPS drivers. Things don't get delivered. So when you, when you go out and strike, you're trying to demonstrate that you can't do it without us and you're treating us wrong. But if you strike and the company says, no, nah, it's not going to have any effect on the operation. In fact, after we're, we're done with Prime Day 1 and 2, we're going to go back and see who didn't show up for work, and then we're going to take action as to whether or not we can fire these people because that's really it. If I had a business and somebody was working there voluntarily, consensually, and they started making demands, i say, hold on, what are you doing? You're making demands? All right, I'm going to put that in a little folder, a little note. I'm going to email that to HR and let you know you're being insubordinate and you're, you're also disrupting um, the, the workflow here. I'll put that, I'll just like document everything. Oh, you missed three hours of work without any kind of permission. And that's got to be a fireable offense, if not close to it. And then you go get fired. And you know what they'll do? They'll hire somebody else because you work in a warehouse and you can train somebody up to work in a warehouse. You can be replaced. So people just don't understand what striking really means. Number one, if you can't even commit to just striking until your demands are met, it's not really a strike. Uh, Number two, 
you're not you're not as in demand as you think, especially on the busiest busiest two days of the year. They're saying, ah, this, this strike's not going to affect anything. We're we're all good. We're all good without those people, and we'll, this will all this will all get settled later. Hell, I thought I thought that Amazon was voluntarily doing the whole magical fifteen dollars an hour thing. I thought that they were like Jeff Bezos says, hey, our starting pay is going to be fifteen dollars an hour, and by the way, we're going to work with Congress to make sure everybody else has to do the same thing because we want everybody else to go out of business so we can take all their business, you see, because we can absorb the $15 an hour wage. Not everybody else can. Mom and pop shops, smaller companies, it's going to cripple them. We'll be fine. We'll make up for it when we take over everybody else's business that gets crippled through a mandated $15 an hour starting pay or minimum wage, however you want to say it. Uh, That said, there's some great deals on Amazon Prime Day. Yeah, yeah, get after it. You need a Fire Stick, you can get one. The Echo Dot, if you're brave enough to have Alexa listening to you at all times, $22. Yeah, 22 bucks. A Dash Rapid Egg Cooker, the popular egg cooker, it's lowest price again. It can make any style of egg. This is like Ron Popeil stuff. Can it scramble an egg while it's still inside the shell? And that's what I want to know. Help me, Mr. Popeil. That uh, Dash Rapid Egg Cooker, $14.99, as seen on TV, I guess. A Kindle. You want a uh, e-reader? 60 bones for a Kindle? Oh, if you want to get an Ancestry DNA kit, that's just 50 bucks. I'm not sure why you would want one. You'll find out some awful things about it. You could find out that you're not Italian. You could find out that you're the descendant of slave owners like, like Mitch McConnell. And like President Obama were. And like Beto O'Rourke said he was. The Life Straw Personal Water Filter, uh, under $10 at $9.89. Sony Wireless Headphones on Amazon, $298. What? It, and that's a deal? These are $350 headphones? You're an idiot if you buy those. You're a complete moron if you buy. You buy headphones that cost more than 20 bucks. You're an idiot. The Philips Sonicare Diamond Clean Electric Toothbrush. $195. $195 for an electric toothbrush? What's wrong with the... Just an Oral-B? What's what's just wrong with a... It's another toothbrush brand. Oral-B. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with brushing your own teeth non-electronically? Maybe if you have some sort of disorder what 200 bucks for an electric tooth you can just get like a little like kids toothbrush it's electric for like three bucks the old kroger so amazon prime they say these are the best deals they're not the best deals in the world uh go check it out if you want though so yeah amazon prime day it's getting big way bigger than nathan bedford forest day nobody celebrated that all right coming up we've got all the latest headlines a leisurely look at them in the news cruise we'll do it next right here in the nation of jake Voice, KWAM, FM 107.9 and AM 990. CBS News Update. President Trump is not only not apologizing for a tweet with racist language aimed at four minority women in Congress, he's doubling down on it. If you're not happy here, then you can leave. As far as I'm concerned, if you hate our country, if you're not happy here, you can leave. And that's what I say all the time. That's what I said in a tweet, which I guess some people think is controversial. A lot of people love it, by the way. Critics say the tweet represents Mr. Trump's re-election strategy. CBS's Nancy Cord is on Capitol Hill. This is a high-stakes strategy that some Republicans, some Republican strategists believe could work in their favor if the president is successful in making Ilhan Omar, making Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez the face of the Democratic Party. Senate Democratic Leader Chuck Schumer said the president's words should be condemned by everyone. CBS News Update, I'm Pam Coulter. Brown Properties. They specialize in commercial and industrial real estate in all of North Mississippi. He helped me locate a space and helped me get in so easily. The most professional, most accommodating person that I have ever worked with in my professional career. I would absolutely recommend Jim Brown very highly. As a matter of fact, he'll be my real estate agent from now into the future for sure. Hi, I'm Jim Brown with Brown Properties, commercial industrial real estate located in South Haven, Mississippi. Call me at 662-393-2255. 
Thrive Bank strives to make banking easy for our customers. You have a lot of choices when it comes to banks, so we invite you to visit one of our local offices in Memphis, Germantown, Collierville, and Arlington to see for yourself how our team, backed by our state-of-the-art online and mobile services, can simplify banking for you and your business. Triumph Bank, invested in our communities and making banking easy for you. Triumph is a member of the FDIC and an equal housing lender. TriumphBank.com. Let's talk growth. It's summertime and everyone is out mowing, trimming, blowing, and more. Whether it's residential or commercial work, your equipment is vital to your performance. Bartlett Small Engines have been serving the Bartlett community for over 45 years. They do even more than repair small engines. They carry the major brands for lawn equipment, garden, home needs, and even have generators with the parts department on site. Call Bartlett Small Engines today, 901-386-9779. Is the constant hustle and grind of the day wearing you down? Why don't you take that stress out on a bag? I'm talking about I Love Kickboxing and Bartlett. I Love Kickboxing is one of the best ways to relieve stress while gaining muscle tone. I Love Kickboxing is an all-level, co-ed fitness kickboxing studio located at the intersection of Highway 64 and Germantown Parkway. Open every day of the week with class times designed to accommodate anyone's schedule. Find them on Facebook at I Love Kickboxing in Bartlett. This is Clark Howard. It's absolutely shocking and amazing the breakthroughs in science and medicine that have improved our lives and saved people's lives. And we're moving into a brand new era of medical breakthroughs based on something that has been hyped for years and for the most part has been a bust, but is finding a new home in medicine, and that's 3D printing. You may have heard that back in the spring, researchers developed a 3D printed heart that is perfect, made to order for each person who needs a replacement heart. And more recently, a new form of 3D printed ear for somebody who's deaf that allows people who might not have ever been able to hear to then be able to hear very well using a 3D implant. This is really where we're headed with medicine. It's great. The backyard's looking great, Rob. Thanks, man. I was planning on adding a deck, too. Know any good contractors? Why don't you just ask HomeAdvisor? Home what? HomeAdvisor.com. You just tell them about your project, and they match you with local pros that can do the job. Nice. Now, how much does it cost? Oh, HomeAdvisor's totally free to use. Plus, you can read customer reviews, check pricing, and book appointments for free. What's the website again? HomeAdvisor.com. Or just download the free Home Advisor app. Home Advisor. Hey. Hey, Bench. What are you doing? I'm rubbing my blue emu on. Were you ready to go fishing? Fishing? You said we were going fishing this morning. I have 10 gold glove oh, awards. Oh, here we go again. Johnny Bench doesn't go fishing. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. Johnny Bench goes catching. Blue Emu supports healthy muscles and joints. Blue Emu, it works fast and you won't stink. Available at nationwide retailers and Amazon. All right, welcome back to it. Yes, have some. The Nation of Jake on The Voice, FM 107.9 AM 990. Online, kwamthevoice.com. Streaming live on YouTube. Just go find Nation of Jake there on YouTube. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. We've got a news cruise to get to. We like to hop on the old news cruise. And we do this as a leisurely look at the headlines. And whenever I tell you about the news cruise and what it is, it's because people are always stopping into the Nation of Jake for the first time ever, all right? I know that you've probably been here a while. You've been on the news cruise a lot. You're a regular fixture. You got a hammer on the news cruise. You're puking off the side. You didn't have a life jacket. And we got our licenses revoked for a while. You were there for that. But there's a lot of people who weren't, all right? So I always like to just let people know what they're about to hear. There's nothing wrong with that. Also, it's a way I stall while I find my news cruise music because it wasn't preloaded on my soundboard. We got it now, though. Woo! News. Exciting and new. Come aboard. 
We're expecting you The news crews Full of exciting news The news crews So relax and kick off your shoes All right, welcome aboard the news crews Brought to you by Just Windows Home Services Just Windows Home Services can not only clean your windows, they're great at that. They can also do pressure washing. You got a patio or walkway that's just full of dirt and grime and such. They can take care of it for you, 751-3934. Or if your gutters are full and on a day like today, you probably noticed whether or not your gutters are full because that water cascading over your gutters, you can just hear your foundation cracking, can't you? All that water getting down in there, just wearing it away. Well, they can keep your gutters clear for you, especially this time of year when mosquitoes can be a big problem. Don't want the West Nile virus? So call Just Windows Home Services, 751-3934. Get a free estimate. And also, you tell them Nation of Jake sent you. Get 20% off that free estimate. All right, so here on the news crews, we've got, with regards to the storms that rolled through, Last night and today, heavy rain. More than 3,000 Memphis Light, Gas, and Water customers lost power. According to the outage map, 3,900 people were left in the dark, but that number has been lowered to 804. The largest outage was reported in the Bartlett area. Oh, we're doing a spotlight on Bartlett. How can we do a spotlight on Bartlett if there's no power? Your spotlight won't fire up. So if there is an uh, outage... You can call MLGW 544-6500 and do not assume that it's already been reported. Uh, the mayor, Mayor Jim Strickland. Mayor! Mr. Strickland! He is calling for stricter laws after more than 30 interstate shootings. Now, the number of shootings out there on the interstate has increased to more than 30 since the beginning of 2019. The most recent shooting was on a Friday night around 10 p.m., According to Memphis police, a car was shot at while merging onto I-240 from Perkins. Police said no one was injured, but Memphis Mayor Jim Strickland said he's fed up with all these incidents. I am fed up. We need stricter laws and we need harsher penalties. Uh, Mayor Strickland has increased patrols in those areas. They've asked the Tennessee Highway Patrol to do more patrols and they're doing it. We've asked Shelby County to have more patrol and they're doing it, he says. Uh, He says that uh, he hopes state leaders will increase penalties for these incidents. Uh, Those people who uh, purposely fire a gun from one person to another ought to be punished with significant jail time, and that's not happening right now. Well, I would agree. I would agree that anybody who shoots at another individual should have significant jail time. All right? That's that's a a fact. I'm, I'm all about it. However... I'm not so sure that that's in the calculus of somebody who would whip out a gun and shoot somebody else in the interstate. All right, I don't think that they're like, ah, should I do this? Well, what are the penalties? Will I go to jail and for how long? I think they're just doing it. So I'm, I'm just not sure what it would do. Uh, listen, I'm all for stricter penalties on people who do it, but I don't know if that's a solution. That might be part of a solution. Uh, that said, we'll we'll see what else we can do about it. Just, uh, it kind of sucks when... You know, when, when you drive through a bad neighborhood, you know, you lock your doors, and you're like, oh, I hope I don't get shot over here. But you would think that if you're traveling around at 65 miles per hour on the interstate, that you're pretty safe. Like, ah, oh, yeah, I'm not going to get shot. I'm on the interstate. Like, no matter where you are, man, 240 in Perkins, oh, I don't go over there anymore. I used to work over there. Awful area now. It used to be great. Now it's terrible. Oh, we've got a convicted sex offender is back in jail, accused of exposing himself to dozens of young children outside of preschool in Central Gardens. Ah, investigators say that Noah Burns, age 56, was standing near the playground at Gray St. Luke's Episcopal School with his pants down. He's playing with himself in front of about 40 children. So this guy was a convicted sex offender out walking around a school. Hmm, I I see where that's that's a problem. Maybe Maybe we can get harsher penalties for guys who play with themselves in front of children. Uh, the playground is gated, but according to court records, that didn't stop Noah Burns, the registered sex offender, from exposing and touching himself in full view of children ranging in age from 2 to 6. Disgusting. 
Get this guy off the street. Put him in a hole. All right, so uh, Burns is charged with indecent exposure, being held on a $5,000 bond. He's supposed to face a judge this morning. Oh, we've got a, a follow-up. Remember that shallow grave in South Haven? And they charged a the guy in connection with it with credit card fraud? Well, now that guy has been charged with murder. And yeah, Michael Guidry was initially charged with credit card fraud after the body was found in the shallow grave. I wonder how shallow it was. Like, were the guy's feet sticking out? There's toes. Man, you, you gotta go a little deeper than that, Guidry. Uh, Guidry is now charged with capital murder, according to the DeSoto County Jail. So, uh, that's, that's actually comforting to know that that guy is no longer out walking around if he's capable of taking somebody's credit card, murdering them, and then burying them into a shallow grave. On uh, here's a... Uh, eh, I don't know if I have time for it. Uh, basically, all you have to know is this. At least 220,000 Tennessee kids face loss of health insurance due to lacking paperwork. All right, this is TennCare. This is state-run insurance. And because of some snafus with paperwork, 220 Tennessee children were cut from their insurance. All right, so that, that's an illustration of state-run health care. That they're, they're, they're archaic in their systems, and they don't really have the incentives to streamline that stuff like the private sector does. And to dovetail onto that, uh, Joe Biden, who is running for president here in 2020, he's the, the front runner. he has unveiled his massive new Obamacare subsidies and public option in a new health care plan because... Obamacare didn't fix everything, right? I thought Obamacare was the fix. I thought, hey, if you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. If you like your plan, you can keep your plan. This will bring premiums down, $2,500 per household. Everything's going to be great with Obamacare. And now all these folks who run for president are saying, ah, Medicare for all, universal coverage, the health care system is broken. Well, Joe Biden can't exactly say that, can he? because he was VP under Obama when they passed Obamacare or the Affordable Care Act, and now he's doubling down. He's saying, oh, we're just going to spend more money on Obamacare. That's what we're going to do. $750 billion over 10 years. They're going to have a public option, and then also, and this is just another step to uh, the single-payer health care. So if you want more state-run health care where kids are getting kicked off insurance plans because of paperwork snafus and whatnot, then uh, Joe Biden might be your guy. All right, we're going to wrap things up and hand it over to Earl Farrell. And we're going to talk to him about, I, I had a plan to talk to him about something. I forget what it was. I'm sure we'll find something to talk about. We'll do it next right here in the Nation of Jake. The Voice, KWAM, FM 107.9 and AM 990. The Voice is proud to turn our spotlight on Bartlett all this week. Bartlett was first called Union Depot and Green Bottom and was the last major stagecoach stop by 1830. In 1866, with a population of less than 100, the city was officially incorporated and the name changed to Bartlett. Now, Bartlett is Shelby County's second and Tennessee's 10th largest city. Bartlett still preserves the small town spirit with a well-balanced city touch. Today, the landscape of Bartlett has changed as agriculture became second to business and in industry. Bartlett, a growing community, keeping a small town atmosphere and continually enhancing the quality of life. Spotlight on Bartlett brought to you in part by these great businesses. ATC Fitness in Bartlett, open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Now accepting Silver Sneakers members. Visit them online at atcfitness.com. First South Financial, banking with friends since 1957. Visit them online at firstsouth.com. This summer, buckle up for the journey of your life at the Pink Palace Family of Museums. Blast off with Apollo 11 First Steps Edition on the giant screen at the CTI Theater. Travel back in time with the Making Memphis Bicentennial Exhibit. Experience the newly renovated Pink Palace Mansion. Come enjoy history, science, nature, and so much more. This summer, travel from Memphis to the moon and back at the Pink Palace Family of Museums. 
When's the last time you looked at the windows in your house? Not through the windows, but at the windows. Really looked at them. There's dirt, streaks, buildup, smudges, fingerprints, paw prints, spider webs, dead bugs. There's little white speckles. I have no idea what they are. And who knows what else? Now, cleaning all the windows in your house makes a big difference, but it's also a big job. That's why you need Just Windows Home Services. Just Windows has been taking the pain out of window cleaning since 1992. Just Windows cleans all types of windows, storm windows, screens, skylights, interior, exterior, upstairs and down. Now I know I told you the company is called Just Windows Home Services, but they do a lot more. Roof and gutter cleaning, pressure washing, mirrors, blinds, ceiling fans, light fixtures, chandeliers. Look, if you've got hard to reach areas of the house, then you need Just Windows Home Services. Call for a free estimate, 751-3934. That's 751-3934 or get them online at JustWindowsMemphis.com. That's JustWindowsMemphis.com. First South has the best rates in town on mortgages, car loans, and CDs. Guaranteed. In fact, if your bank has a better rate, we'll beat it. Applying for a loan or opening an account is easy. Just stop by any one of our banking centers or go online to FirstSouth.com. Enjoy the positive difference of banking with First South Financial. Banking with friends since 1957. For baby boomers, here's something to think about. Will you have enough income during your retirement? Are you absolutely sure? Do you understand the difference between growth and income? How about bonds and bond funds? Are you 100% ready for RMDs? Do you have an estate plan? If you've said no to any of these, we can help. Right now, log on to theretirementincomedoctor.com and tune in our brand new radio show right here, Saturday mornings at 10 a.m., When you walk into Karaoke Cafe in Bartlett, here everybody really does know your name and you never meet a stranger. Karaoke Cafe is a great way to have fun and bring the kids along with you. Karaoke Cafe serves a full menu including Mexican-American dishes and breakfast all day long. Make Karaoke Cafe located on Stage Road in Bartlett your next stop for food, friends, and fun. All right, welcome back to it. Yes, have some. The Nation of Jake on The Voice, FM 107.9 AM 990. Less than 10 minutes, you're going to get the Earl Farrell program here on KWAM The Voice. Earl's here. Earl, over the weekend, you got to meet the Doobie Brothers? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact. Did I, you, uh, you smoke a Doobie with the Doobie Brothers? No, I, uh, I uh, smoked some chicken. <laughs> smoked chicken out of my smoker, but uh, not the Doobie Brothers. No, we went to the concert at Live at the Garden. Man, that's one of those things where Live at the Garden always has some pretty great acts. Doobie Brothers are legendary, man. Was uh, was my man Michael McDonald with the Doobies? Uh, if he was, I didn't see him. He was not right. on stage. He could have right. been he in was, the audience. He, he was, he was a Doobie kinda, for a while. He, he has a house here, I think. He does. Michael McDonald does? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Taking it to the streets, old Michael McDonald. So, yeah, I didn't know how it was going to go down. I guess uh, perfect timing with the rain. Rain, right? st- rain stopped uh, just before... They let everybody in, and that was delayed a little bit because of lightning. I don't let anybody in if it's lightning. But the, that stopped, and everybody got in. Now, I was one of the smart ones brought a towel to dry off the seats, and uh, it, it cooled everything off. It was a great night. But I said, we're leaving early. My wife goes, why? I said, because it's going to be a quagmire out there through the grass area where they park everybody, and it was. So all you got to hear, though, from the doobies is China Grove and Long Train Running. That's and did, right. did you hear Long Long Train Running in China Grove? But they didn't do it till the end. They played a lot of their new stuff. Oh, they don't have new stuff, do they? Well, oh, I'd never man. heard it before. That's all I got to say. I mean, this is an all-time riff, baby. You got the... Yeah, they played that. Dun, 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 dun. dun. Whoa, China Grove! Or long, I mean, all, that's, that's it. Like... I wish you could do that. You could like pay a prorated amount for a concert. And just like, hear the songs you want to hear. Just hear the songs you want to hear. Yeah. Like here, I'll leave until they start playing trying to grow. And I don't think they should have a warm up act either. Don't need a warm up act. Yeah, an opener? Nah. Yeah, it just depends. Like I like co headlining. You know, you might have like the doobies with somebody else cool, like some Steely Dan or something like yeah, that. But, I don't know. But, something that fits some yacht rock. Along with the doobies. I guess that's how younger groups get their reputation. Oh yeah, no, Lisa, you take a band look, take a band on tour with you, then you get they're following out, and you kind of share an audience, and it kind of works both ways. 
So I'm glad you got to see the old doobies, but I'm disappointed you didn't partake and maybe smoke a doobie. No, uh, doobie Olsen, doobie. Olson's got to go back there and get his picture taken. I bet he bit. smoked a doobie. I Maybe. started to, but just because they look older than I do. Bye. <laughs> KWAM, your news and information station with CBS News updates every hour on the hour. KWAM Memphis. This is CBS News on the hour, sponsored by Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. I'm Pam Coulter. President Trump.